So previously, in the last lecture, what we did was we had yielded values, values that were returned out of the function. So we have the generator satnav function, and what we did was we had a string next to the yield, next to the stop sign, so what was happening was when we invoked the current method, the current method simply returned the value of the yield statement. This could also be a number, it could be any primitive data type or object for that matter. You can yield back or return back any data type, just like you can with a regular function with a return statement. So those values can be given back. But we wanna do something a little bit different, and this is something that's really special with generator functions is the fact that we can actually send values as well. We don't just have to receive them like with the current method, we're receiving a value from the yield statement. But in this case, we want to do the reverse. We want to send yield a value. And you can see how this is quite powerful because once I send this yield a value and we yield that value, you can assign it to a variable. In this case, we've created a distance variable, which wasn't much use in the last lecture. But in this lecture, it will be of some use because what we wanna do is we wanna take that yielded value, we send it a value, it yields it or contains it, and that allows us to assign it to a container or variable. So, Let's take a look at this. I invoke the generator function that creates an object that allows me to control the execution of the generator function. And then what I can do is I can target that control object and then I can run the current method. So currently we're right at the top of the execution context and it starts to invoke. So we have the distance variable and then we have the echoed out string, which we can see here, start from driveway. And then we want to yield at this point. So currently the function stops its invocation and it allows us to actually do processes outside of the function. So we have this echo statement, analyze distance. This could be a function call to work out the distance that we have currently driven to and you'll see that it prints out the string analyze distance. So we know that the function is waiting at this point. But what I want to do now is I want to send yield a value. I want to give a value and yield it and assign that value to the distance variable. And then I can print that value out in the string. I can echo that out. So the way that we now continue and push on the accelerator pedal is not the next method. The next method won't allow me to send a value. So what I need to do is I need to target my control object and use the send method. And then I'm gonna send it a value such as 50. So we've driven 50 miles so far. That's a long way from the driveway. But I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then let's hit refresh. So we ran the current set of instructions. We did a little analysis and our analysis returned the value of 50, hypothetically speaking. So what we did was we targeted our control object that controls our generator's execution. And what we're doing is we're using the send method and we're sending the value, which is the first parameter. This is the value that's sent to the current stop yield. So think of this like you go up to a stop sign, you get out your car and you actually receive a value and then you get back in your car and you drive on. So what we're doing here is we're yielding the value of 50. So this is like saying distance is equal to 50. We're yielding and sending that value back and then we can use that value. So you can see echo out distance miles full stop then put a line break in there and say now take a left. So you can see here, 50 miles, full stop, line break, now take a left. So we've now continued our journey. So currently now we've executed the echo command. We are at this stop sign. And again, this stop sign doesn't have any value associated with it. 
we are not using it like a return. We want this yield to pause the function, but we also want to yield a value again. We want to be able to get out the car and bring something into the car, take another value, if you will. So let's go ahead and copy this line of code. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it. So now, once the function is at this stop sign, it's paused, I can analyze the distance that has been driven. And then what I want to do is I want to target the control object and I want to run the send method. And the send method can send a value. So let's increase the distance now to 70 miles. So I'm going to go ahead and save this now. And when I hit refresh, you'll notice it says 50 miles. Now take a left. That's where we last were. We were waiting at the stop sign. And then what we did was we went outside of the function. We allow and yield for other processes to take place, which we analyzed the distance. And then we ran the send method again, and it allowed us to pass in the value of 70. So that's the value we yielded right there, the value of 70. And that got assigned to the distance variable. We echoed this out, distance, miles, line break, destination reached, and guess what? That's what we got right there. So the concept is simple. We yield values and we can do that by using the send method and that will allow us to send a value in, yield that value. That value can be assigned to let's say a variable and then we push the accelerator pedal. So we go, we grab something, we pull it into the car and then we carry on executing. And what function do you know of that is capable of doing this other than a generator function? Well, you only have the old style execution which you couldn't do this. You couldn't intermittently change a value right in the middle of execution. But now with generator functions, you can do this. So this is actually a really nice and impressive feature with generator functions.